All right, welcome into OGHQ here in the Yarn Building. Uh, we're going to make a video series here that I've been planning to make for many, many years. Uh, this uh, this will be a back to basics, uh, start to finish, all the parts and pieces of the process that I've cobbled together over the years of traveling around the country, learning from masters as well as trial and error on my own. Uh, and so we're going to take all of this knowledge, all of this wisdom that I've, again, acquired, and we're going to put it into one car. So we're going to do a car and actually we're going to do Michelle's Raptor in the same process uh, that I've sort of put together. Uh, and so Tom is here from Atlanta. Uh, Tom is actually going to be taking care of the, the garage, the big garage, the Atlanta, the massive project that we did. Uh, so he's going to be taking care of John's cars. And so uh, John sent him down here and so Tom came to, to sort of help me do the Raptor. Uh, he's going to ask a bunch of questions and we're going to take you through all the step-by-step -step process. We're going to cut this video a little tighter, a lot tighter than I normally do, uh, and we're going to get him up to speed on the OG process. All right, Tom, so this is my favorite part. This is where I sort of cobble together, put together all the different parts and pieces, get everything ready, get everything prepped. Right. You know, that's part of the whole point of detailing the car is you're doing all the prep work so you can enjoy the car more, sure. right? So you, we polish it, we detail it, we put it all together. Uh, first step in the decon process is decon soap. Uh, and so what I generally like to do is just get, you know, fill up my bottles, get everything cleaned up. But the magic of this soap, it foams really well it is super, super slick. So we're not introducing extra scratches as we're going through this process. And, um, and it works really well in your bucket too. You'll find this is a product that, you know, I will use periodically, especially on a coated car, just to kind of refresh. I'll use it. Uh, it's, it's stripping ability. It's not gonna strip a coating off. Right. It probably isn't going to completely strip a wax either. Hmm. Um, we just want to get the surface clean. You it's know, the, a little more aggressive. Slightly, correct. It's like a pH of like nine, nine and change. Mm. So it's not a particularly aggressive soap. I didn't know what to make of that. And then I just decided, you know what, the stuff works, works well. You know, why am I questioning it? Why am I second guessing it? Because even though there's pH, I mean, these have surfactants, they have detergents inside of the soap. And so, you know, we're, we're not, I'm not here to sort of debate whether or not it needs to be a certain pH. Uh, but in general, the stuff tends to work pretty well. So we're going to use this on the Raptor in order to get it prepared and ready to go. So generally what I'll do is just clean up with this since I'm going to use this anyway. And it always feels good to start a big project like this and have all your bottles and stuff prepped and ready to go. So this will be our first step, which will be decon uh, or decon wash. And we're going to use a lot of this stuff. So we'll, um, we'll, we'll take this bottle over there with us. I put a little top on here, so I'm going to put that little, this little pop top and put that on so we can squeeze it. Uh, and then the next step is going to be iron removal. So after we wash the truck, we're going to iron remove uh, and we're going to use this product called um, uh, um, uh, Iron Buster, uh, which is from P&S. Always, don't shake, but always agitate your chemicals. I, I learned this from my friend Larry Cosilla. <laughs> always always do that because chemicals will sit and you'll have different concentrations on the top and bottom. Sure. So these are the Pressol bottles, you know, 720 or 750 milliliter bottle, my favorite new bottle. Step two is going to be iron removal. Okay. Then step three is going to be to auto scrub. So this is a, you know, rubber based uh, thingy right. that, that, that uh, synthetic type of clay. Right. Uh, and so instead of us doing, uh, instead of us doing a clay bar, you know, traditional clay bar. Now I do carry, I have a clay bar in my claw, in my cabinet, right. Coach Kemi. Um, so we do have this if we need it for certain applications. Sometimes you need a clay bar. Sure. I think for this truck, I don't think we're going to need it. I think we're going to just auto scrub the thing because we're going to polish the heck out of this thing. Right. Okay. Uh, and so I only use the fine. I don't find any need for anything more aggressive. So the small is the fine. No, no, the, the blue is the fine. They make a more aggressive version of this, a stickier, tackier with the little bigger diamonds that poke out. Right. Um, this is the original. This is from Nanoskin. These are the guys that sort of developed this, this tech, uh, if you want to call it tech. And um, I don't put it on the machine. I use the big one on my hand. We'll use it quite, quite a bit on the, on the panels of the Raptor. And then, you know, I usually, usually have one of each of these. Right. Uh, and we're going to use that 
with a clay lube. Uh, and I used to use NanoSkin Glide, but this stuff, this McKee stuff is mm -hmm. fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and so we're gonna mix up a clay lube solution it's here. This so is a 750 milliliter bottle. Right. We want to dilute our solution. It says here right on the side of the bottle, it says um, for clay lubricant, one to 128 is their concentration. And so uh, what we do is we take our bottle, which is 750. Now we're probably not gonna fill it completely to 750, so let's actually back off that a little bit and let's say we're gonna fill it up to like seven, you know, because we get the foam on the top. Let's say we're gonna fill it up to 725. Right. Uh, so 725 divided by 129 would be 5.6 ounces. Uh, I'm sorry, 5.6 milliliters of what we're, we're going to fill okay. in here. Right. So the problem with our pro blender here is that you know it basically starts at 10. You know, uh, so there's our five, and so the way that this thing works is you just twist the twist the thing to get the you know to get the orange to whatever whatever height you want it to be, uh, okay. and then we squeeze this and it and it fills up. So notice we're kind of already at. I'm okay with being a little overly concentrated here. So if I squeeze this and it goes up to there, notice it comes back down to you know roughly five ounces. Oh, that's helpful. <laughs> in this case, in this case, ten. You know, that's so we're we're close. So we're going to be a little over concentrated. I'm okay being having being over concentrated when I'm doing a clay lube because they're going to polish the darn thing anyway. You would want to be more accurate. Uh, what a lot of people will do is they'll mix up a full gallon diluted because hmm. uh, it's a little easier to get a more accurate concentration that way. Uh, and so. Um, if you're doing this waterless wash or rinseless wash, you would want to make sure you dilute it properly. Right. You don't want to be over diluted because then you'll leave a residue behind, which you don't want to do. So you can see just a little bit on the bottom and that's really all you need. So we're going to fill the rest of this up with, with, um, with water. The last product we're going to use for decon, we may have some tar, we may have some adhesive or something on it. So I like to have a bottle of, uh, this is um, CarPro uh, Tar-X. Okay. So we have a bottle of this and we have a couple of towels in case we have some tar around the back of the truck. Most nine times out of 10, I don't end up needing this, but right. I like to carry it with me when I'm go, going to go do a Does decon. Does it work on bugs as well? Or? It can, yeah. Um, I tend to not need to do anything with bugs, you know, especially after the car is done. When the car is treated and coated, the bugs will just wipe right off. Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't believe in using any kind of specific bug remover. Okay. I believe in doing the prep. Yeah. Let's do the prep, let's get the coating, let's get the wax, or let's get the sealant on the car. Uh, and then when you're doing, we'll talk about when we do the wash uh, in more detail, but when we wash, you'll get 95% of the bug off in the wash phase. Uh, and then you don't need to use any chemicals because this chemical will attack the coating under wax in the car too. Right. It'll be okay a few times, but if you do that every time, you're, you're gonna destroy Stop the it. coating. Yeah. So I prefer to leave the coating alone and, and then I can just hit the rest of the bug when the, all the sand and dirt and all that's removed. Moved, I can use my drying aid and just wipe it clean and wipe it off. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. The other product we're going to need is we're going to need um, a brake buster. So this is for the wheels. Now we're going to do a separate series on wheels. We'll do a separate little side note on wheels. This truck, the wheels are technically already done. Mm. I hope I haven't ruined them, but uh, I have uh, two coats of Deluxe, a single coat of, uh, of Carpo Gliss which is uh, in here somewhere, I've got it around here somewhere. Um, I've already done those, and so those, uh, those don't, uh, we're just gonna wash those and, and clean up the tires. So four wheels, I like to do full straight up product. This stuff is pretty nasty and ruins pretty much everything because this is a very high pH. Right. But because we're gonna dilute this when we're foaming, we don't want to dilute it anymore, I don't think. And this stuff is cheap enough that I can just run this straight up in my foam cannon. So let's get our, um, our decon soap ready. So 150 milliliters. Now this is a big truck. We do 150 milliliters and I would fill this up to 750. Hmm. So whatever that dilution is. Um, but for this, I'm going to go quite a bit more aggressive. I'm going to fill it up to say 200 milliliters of soap. Largely because I always have a gallon of this and I don't use this very often. And so I feel like, uh, feel like I give myself permission to use more of this. <laughs> this isn't as expensive also as the, uh, as the GSF that we use for our normal maintenance washes. And so third line is 150 milliliters. Fourth line would be 200. Let's just go to 200. Mm. Cause we're gonna fill this all the way up to the top. But normally when I'm doing a car, 
I would uh, do 150 milliliters and fill up the foam can at a 750, and I'd still end up with a good, you know, three or 400 milliliters left, and I'd dump it in my wash bucket. Right, right. Love the funnel. <laughs> Certainly not necessary, but none of this stuff is necessary. Okay, so I'm gonna fill these up with water, and we'll meet you guys out at the out of the truck. With all my rinse buckets filling, I get the pressure washer ready. Always make sure to take the PP plug out so you don't lock it on the machine. Don't forget to do that. Reduce my drag here. I'm gonna pull out my hose. We're actually working on a solution where this thing is gonna turn out. So that way if everybody has on their side wall, they can turn it and pull it straight out uh, their garage, straight. which will be awesome. Nice. Because the sun is starting to peak out here, we're gonna go and do this as deionized water as well. So normally I would fill this up to 750 and then call it good. But because this is a big truck and we want to decon and make sure we get really good coverage, cover every square inch of it, I'm gonna fill it all the way up and that's why I added a little bit more soap. Take the cap and we'll leave the cap on there just so I can mix it up, especially as thick as that soap is. So now I don't like to do the wash bucket yet because I'm in my, all my suds are gone by the time I get moving. So I like to fill up the wash bucket after I'm done with my rinsing, after I'm done with my wheels and all that stuff. So pressure washer set up, we gotta do the wheels first. Um, so again, normally I would do, you know, we would, we'd be removing the wheels, right? And we'd be doing the, doing the whole, whole process. Right. Uh, but because these wheels were already coated, uh, we're not gonna remove them, okay. uh, at least not to coat them. So I wanna wash them since, since we're, you know, gonna get the truck all clean anyway. So let's, uh, we're gonna do the wheels first. I'll let you do them and I'll talk you through my process. I'll do one and then I'll let you do the others. So let's go, turn that on to DI, turn our pressure washer on, good to go. Set these aside, get my chair, get my bucket here. All right, so wheel cleaning process is pretty simple. Rinse it first to find out if our coating has failed. Shouldn't. Yeah, it's still on there, good. The problem with not maintaining a coating is then it fails, you know, if you don't maintain it. I haven't washed the darn thing at all. Hit it with brake buster and the foam what's, cannon. What's the coating that you have on there? CarPro Deluxe yeah. and two coats of that and one coat of CarPro Gliss. So we hit the wheel. And just because of the way this is set up, the easy detail brush works better than the than the Car Pro brush. Barrels first. Also, wheels first. Always do wheels first. You don't want your paint drying while your wheels are while you're working on your wheels. Lambskin mitt. I don't like to use a bucket with water in it for cleaning wheels when I can just do this. I actually use a lot, maybe not a lot less, but a similar amount of water. And then I'm not dealing with all kinds of gunk. Then what I like to do is hit the tires with a fresh, non-diluted uh, brake buster spritz. So this is the new it's the first time I've done truck tires with this. This is the new uh, brush and detail factory. Yeah, these bristles, these are a little softer than the, uh, the Tough Shine brush. It's good. And I'm just gonna rinse. Now Matt, you ever use like a long handle type brush inside the wheel well? Well, I don't normally clean trucks, but yeah, if I was a truck guy, I would probably have something bigger than this. Yeah. It doesn't make a lot of sense because I'm willing to clean the truck, but I'm like, you know, the wheel well is going to get dirty after five seconds. So I tend to not really care too much about wheel wells. Everybody has a line they draw, you know. You can see 
there's nothing on that surface of paint is no. like <laughs> yeah no good you can see our coating is still on the wheels sure. you can tell because it's you know water now this is a matte finish like a like a textured crinkle type finish so it's not um you can see it's porous so it's not going to beat up water like normal but the coating is certainly still on there you yeah you would know if it wasn't See, it comes out watery. So now twist the knob. See, it's not, it's not foaming while you're pulling. Yeah, so let me show you. So this always stays here and then right here. And then you always have to adjust this. I don't know why it reverts back all the time, but my foam can is just a little, there we go. Yeah. Turn it again. Turn the top. Not that one, this one. There we go. But normally on a foam can, you don't have to do that. What happens is the filter over time gets janked up from this, uh, from this crap. So then it's easier to take your hose and put it behind you. There you go. Oh man, I missed a nib. You missed what? I missed the tire nib. See, there's a nib right there. It's gonna drive me crazy. Oh my gosh. Ah, ah, I'm gonna have to cut it with a thing. This is one of those things, this product, especially on these wheels, especially if they were uncoated, you know, it's heavily, heavy alkaline. So you wanna make, like, you wouldn't want this to dry, you know, from the sun, you know, so if you were out in the sun and you were, you know, washing your wheels with, with anything alkaline, a brake buster, it'll really jack up these black wheels. You know, if we weren't, if we weren't, you know, if we weren't in the shade like we are now. So step one in decon, rinse. Pretty simple, right? Nothing special about rinsing. I'm just managing distance. If I notice I'm not like, not just get, we're not getting wet here. And that's a point, that's a waste of time. We're, you know, we're painting the surface. But now is the time to do the engine bay. So we're going to use the same product on the engine bay that we use on the bed liner called hyper dressing. So first thing I'm going to do is just spray it. Okay, so here's what we got. We got Green Star, and I'm not sure what somebody mixed this up as, but it should tell you on the back, back of the bottle, depending on the dirt, cleaning vehicles, exteriors, and engines, use one to five to one to 30. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just gonna, this is how I clean engine bays. Hit it with some, some all-purpose cleaner. We're gonna agitate it a little bit. If you were doing a lot of engines, I would advise you to get a bunch of different brushes and all kinds of you know, various tools. I just use the wheel clean, wheel brushes and just kind of agitate it because all of my cars and all the cars you're going to be working on, clean. yeah, you're just kind of touching up. Right. Same thing with this. Even though it's got some goop on it, it's pretty darn clean under here. Sure. You know, we're not like rebuilding or revamping this. Uh, this is not like a full detail project here. This is a really simple cleanup that we're hoping to remove some of that silicone goop that they put on here, and that's so, about it. If you had a car that the engine hadn't been detailed, mm -hmm. maybe just increase the, the strength of the... Yeah, and, and again, I think, I think you're going to want a lot of tools. You're going to want little brushes, and you're going to want to take sections, and you know, you're going to want to take your time. You're about to see how I'm going to do this. Just slop some crap on there and swish a roo and call it a day, you know? So I'm going to use my three wheel tools, and that's it, yeah. you know? I'm just going to kind of agitate here just to kind of get it cleaned up. And cleaning is never touchless, even with an all-purpose cleaner. Right. You still got to do some, some work. But the cleaner and the light agitation typically is Mix. probably all you need, even on something yeah. that's pretty filthy. But see, this is where people make a big mistake is that you use products that make it 10 times worse. You know, all this crap that they put on here just attracts dirt. Right. Doesn't get rid of dirt. Yeah, it makes it look good initially. Yeah. So that's what a lot of what I'm about is finding products that improve and don't, 
you know, give you short-term gratification. Like, there's no, like, free lunch in this game. This wouldn't have any dirt on it. I'm going to do an initial rinse just because you don't want all-purpose cleaners drying. So, I like to do this now because we're getting all-purpose cleaner all over the, you know, the paint. Now, this is touchless. So, I've done the cleaning. Right. This is hyperdressing diluted four to one. Okay. Meguiar's hyperdressing. Hmm. And all I'm going to do is put this on and let it dry. Nice. You, you don't want to. You don't want to get the engine hot with this on it. I don't think. I don't think it'll hurt anything. But hmm. and what you'll find, this stuff, there'll be a few pockets you might have to wipe, hmm. wipe flat. Uh, but in general, this is touchless in that I'm able to put it on here. So this is the type of dressing you want to use on your on your you know engine bay type we're also going to use the same thing on the uh on the bed liner right. and you said that's diluted four to, one. four to one and then i just shut it and that's it okay now we need to wash the thing so all that prep we're an hour in we haven't even done anything yet <laughs> So what I like to do next is foam it. So notice I haven't prepped my, my soap bucket yet. Right. Still, if I was dilly-dallying around, my soap would be dead by now. You know, I wouldn't have any suds at all. Suds, yeah. And let me get a different ladder, because this ladder is gonna get me killed. And I just wanna cover the whole surface. So it's arguable whether this even does anything. It looks cool, gets soap on the truck, aids in lubrication. This isn't clean and squat. You know, this is a soap. This is where I think people are mistaken. And then the soap, this is where Europeans, you know, they have a different opinion on this. Europeans use soap that has, you know, that's alkaline. It has heavy cleaning agents in it. Very little cleaning is done by the soap. You know, the soap is, you know, now this soap is doing a little bit of stripping, but generally speaking, when I'm washing, you know, the soap is not here to like rip all the dirt off. Yeah. Soap is there to aid in lubrication, encapsulate the, the dirt so you can remove the rest of it. I've already removed some of it by spraying the car off. Where Europeans, they like to use a soap that's, you know, more aggressive. I would argue then you're attacking your, your, uh, your protection layer. You're attacking your coating, your right. wax, your sealant. I don't think you want to do that. At least that's my preference in the washing process. But I do want to get the soap on the darn truck. Like I'm not just, like you see people doing this. Like, like what, what's the point of that? I want to get, so I want to get the whole surface coated, covered. I take my time and I paint it on there like if I was painting a car. So that's that's the decon soap foaming process. Pretty simple, huh? So the you know my foam can and I just gently rinsed it out. I'm not so worried about. There's no like this is soap isn't so aggressive. I have to worry about crazy cross contamination. So I can use this as my GSF, my normal soap, okay. my normal pH neutral soap all the time. So no big deal. Then I'm going to take, and I've kind of moderated on this. I used to, used to be a, I learned this from Adam, from Adam's Polishes, uh, where you'd put the soap on the sponge. I don't really do that as much anymore. Um, I tend to find if the soap is thicker, it's better to like, this is a pretty thick soap. So I'll tend to put it on the sponge. Um, just because then you're trying to get it off the bottom of the thing and then it sprays out and you lose some yeah. soap. But again, spray some soap in wherever, you know. If you're using your own soap, you might want to be a little bit more, you know, judicious, judicious with how much soap you use. If you're using somebody else's soap, use some extra. Go for it. So then I'm going to prep my bucket here so you can see why we waited. 
Otherwise, you know, this would have been just flat water with some soap in it. We would have had to re-agitate it. This is a 24 inch bucket filler on a hose bib that's 48 inches high. This makes your life way better and filling up buckets without having to get a garden hose out or no, some other yeah, weird attachment. That's a little easier. So you can feel the alkalinity in this soap, how slick it is. Mm. You know, crazy slick. Oh my gosh. It's pretty awesome. It is crazy. Yeah. Many times you want to use, the, you almost want to use this soap all the time because it's great. So we're going to put two sponges in here. We're going to tackle this together. I'm going to go top down. Right. right. And so I'm not here to sandblast the paint. I'm just here to clean it. Even though we're going to polish it, I think we should not really get too aggressive with it. Now, because there's no protection on this, the dirt's going to want to hang on. But I feel like we'll get that later, you know? Um, and all these various steps are going to go through in this decon process. So I'm just kind of dragging this on the surface. Yeah, just, just hand pressure. This is the other reason why I like pads personally instead of mitts. A mitt, you tend to lean into it more, tend to get more aggressive with it. Here, it'll make more sense on the side of the truck here. But. So I'm gonna do this. A lot of people get obsessed about, well, you gotta get it down on the grit guard. I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't find that necessary. Just kind of swish it around, put it in this here, and then I'm gonna go clean the surface. So there might be some bugs left over here. I'm not worried about that right now. Okay. You know, we're gonna get that when the truck's clean. Think about it, if there's still sand and dirt, I just dislodge it, but it's still, some of it's here, some of it's there. It's still here, the dirt, and, until we rinse it off. And so I don't wanna attack anything while there's sand, and especially in Florida with all the sand on the ground. And so I don't wanna attack things now, I wanna attack it when it's clean, when I've, yeah. Just, just to get a better chance of not scratching the crap out of the surface. So mirrors, Class doesn't matter as much, but mirrors and you know front bumpers and stuff like that. Now, notice this section. I'm gonna go from top to bottom. That's it. A flip. Flip the thing, top to bottom. I'm done. I gotta go back. Back to the bucket. Get some of the dirt to slodge. Come here. There are many arguments, different schools of thought on what's the best way to do this. Theoretically speaking, you know, if you had one bucket and you had 25 of these, right. then you do that, those two sections and you put it away. Anybody I've ever seen with that, with that one bucket me method argument uses like four and they'll do the whole side of the truck. That doesn't make any sense to me. And so I think a two bucket method is still superior, but you know, you could make arguments either way. So you know, I got some, some dirt, some funk, you know, and then I come here and I do this. Nice and simple. On this truck, I'm gonna open this up. Here, do that. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here to the door jam. I'm gonna do this. While I'm here, clean that off. But you know, I'm just doing this for the camera, but traditionally I would do the, do the other side of the roof, right. do the hood, then come and start to do these areas. Sure. But you want to, you know, and again, it's not critical. This isn't like, you know, rocket science here. We're just freaking cleaning the thing. Uh, and, and we're not, uh, we're not as worried because we're going to polish it, but why add scratches? You know, why add additional problems that you're going to have to fix? And you just manage your, especially on a big truck like this, your tendency is going to be to want to do giant areas. Just keep going back to your buckets. What's the point of having them unless you're going to use them? This like dragging your mitt across the surface should be all you need because your, your, you know, your coating or your sealant is cr making a surface that's not very, you know, the things don't stick to very well. And so this washing process is not about like a buff clean off, you know, this is a, you're just dislodging the rest of the dirt. So we shouldn't have to go aggressive in this. Because we're gonna do the next two steps of the decon process, those next two steps are gonna take care of any aggressive dirt that we have on the surface because this hasn't been detailed. 
So now we're gonna rinse. This is just the cleaning step. You know, we're using a soap that helps us out a little bit, but this isn't the real decon. There's two steps to decon. There's chemical decontamination and then there's physical decontamination. So the chemical decontamination decontam is the sodium hydroxide. That's the iron remover. That's what we're gonna use on this. Because iron, embedded iron, will attach itself to the sort of, the, like if you look at clear coat under a microscope, it's real jagged. Mm. And there's little, you know, microscopic pieces of iron that will embed itself from rail cars and just from brakes and things like that. It'll embed itself in the paint but there's still embedded stuff on the surface. There's still things that are on the surface of the paint. You can feel it on, it just feels heavy, you know? All right, we're ready to iron remove. We're just gonna spray it on and walk away. Spray it on, let it do its thing. Why am I so far away? And then rinse it off. Now how long can this sit on the surface before you really gotta get it off? Again, it's not gonna really do much damage, if any. But um, by the time I get done with spraying this whole thing, you can do the glass, plastics, everything. Then I'm ready to take it off. See all this purple here? More on that paint than you think, dude. Yep. Amazing. See all that. So now you need to do a real thorough rinsing and get all this junk off. So we've got two the contraptions here. This is all I use. They make several towels, all different kinds of things. I like these the best. It's a personal preference. So I've got the pad on my hand. You could, you know, this is for a polish. You could put this on the machine if you wanted to, but I find that it takes five times longer. You can't get in any cracks and crevices, so just put it on your hand. Sure. And then for the tighter areas like here, I'll use this. What this is doing, think about this. I'm putting on the, on the surface. It's creating a sort of a a bond or a creating a you know, suction with the surface and it's it's grabbing and removing or or dislodging any embedded contamination and then pulling it into this surface well probably not it's probably just now on a clay bar yes okay. but on this no it's going to sit on the surface that's why eventually occasionally you'll come back and just kind of rinse it off right. and so that's why we want to use a lubrication you don't have to i mean just the water alone or you could do this like in the in the washing you know with soap, with the soap. again i want to get the soap off the car with the dirt as much as possible. Right. I only want to be left over with whatever's lodged on the surface. And so let's go on the side here. I'm going to hit the it. surface with my lubricant. Remember, we mixed this up earlier. This was a clay lube that is uh, diluted um, uh, 128 to 1. I'm going to take my pad. And I'm going to... Same kind of pressure, maybe a little bit more pressure than I would use on my... Uh, on my wash mitt, but you shouldn't need a lot of pressure. It should create a pretty, you know, pretty, should sort of almost suction on here. So I don't really need to do anything crazy, but yeah, I'm just kind of scrubbing the surface, hitting it with lubricant. So, so when you're doing it, so you're not right, doing this, it doesn't work. You have to do, okay, right? Otherwise, you're just moving water around. Okay. We need to abrade the surface. So I add a little bit of pressure, but a little bit of back and forth. Right. Kind of like if you were doing, you know, you were doing your, your tires, you know, it doesn't really work unless you give it a little back and forth movement. Yeah. Same thing with a clay bar. You're going to almost like think of it kind of like a little miniature polishing of the, of the paint. We good? That's it. All right, let's rinse it and we're done. And so we're just gonna blow as much water as we can off of it. This is a Ego, this is the, uh, I forget which model this one is. This is the five, I have them all. This is the five, that'll be, this is the 580. This is my favorite. I don't what know if they still that? make this one. Is, there, is there this is this modified? One. Yeah, this is a this is a prototype, 3D printed prototype. Okay. But we have these coming out. It's a Obsessed Garage Stubby, which turns this into a an Apex Air Stubby. That's perfect. Um, but yeah, this this takes it and makes it a super functional. 
All right, so that's the, the end of the decon process. Remember, it's three steps. First is the washing with decon soap. Second is our, our chemical decontamination with our iron remover. Third step, which is, uh, goes much quicker nowadays that have gotten more experience doing this, is the, is the uh, mechanical decontamination st st uh, phase. I stole those terms from uh, Todd Cooper Ryder uh, from Esoteric Detail. They, the, the process of getting the surface cleaned, prepared, for polishing it takes a little less time if you're if you're not running around with cameras but it should take an hour or an hour and a half maybe two hours at the most on a truck like this uh, depending on if you're doing the wheels or not so that's a wrap on the decon i'm going to go and we're going to finish drying it off with some basic drying towels remember no drying aid no waxes no sealants we want the surface clean and ready without any protection on it for our polishing step you'll get the best results with polishing you'll gum up your pads less so then we'll pull the truck in and we'll get prepared for polishing as our next step